Welcome to Oddball History, dipshits. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Oh, oh. <laughs> we have to, we have to guess with that now. It's going to be our thing now. Nobody's going to like it. <laughs> we don't but care. But we're doing it. So we're having some hot pod talk, pre-pod, pre-pod podding. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about dominant child athletes. That's right. I remember two specifically in Little League Baseball, Ryan Blackman and Trey Guthrie. Ryan Blackman, you're talking about, he was like a 12-year-old that was six foot tall and kind of gangly. Yeah. And I wish I knew the speeds, because I'm sure he was throwing like 68 miles an hour, but was like 12. And it was like John Rocker coming. I remember he played on like the Cubs team and the HVBSA. Yeah, when you're throwing 75 as a little leaguer from that distance, that's gas. And oh man, he he beamed me one time. And I just remember, yeah, it was literally like the intimidation of like, oh, and he went to a different school. Yeah. So it was just like, Ryan Blackman's coming to the mound. Yeah. You hear about like the kids Nolan Ryan faced in high school, which is just a great genre of stories, pro yeah. athlete high school oh, yeah. stories. It's wonderful. But there was one kid, I remember we, he like broke his arm. He shattered another, a batting helmet on another kid. So he was throwing gas, but he had no control. It was like <laughs> yeah. a high school kid in yeah. Alvin, Texas. So these kids are just getting maimed by Nolan Ryan. <laughs> fastballs and like best case scenario that guy goes on to be like a legend and you get like a fun story of being a victim of yeah. Nolan Ryan it, like if he wasn't as good he would, it would he suck just, even you were more. just scared just in high school arm, one time <laughs> yeah but we had Trey Guthrie too who was 510 buck 85 when we right. were 13 oh yeah he was just a giant yeah, it's always like the gift and the curse thing, you know, like growing really too quick. Like yeah. at the time, I was like, oh man, I wish I was a giant among boys. But then, you know, you grow you balance like out. at a normal pace, and yeah. then you end up. It's like you, but you get right. to feel what being Michael Jordan is like for a couple years. Yeah, you know, you're just like, I'm just better than everybody. This is awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. Uh, yeah, that would be. That would be a lot of fun. I think to this day. You know? <laughs> Still, if I could do it now, I if might I could do play it. a bunch of small children in basketball <laughs> on eight foot rims, I think that would be a lot. That of fun. would be a blast for me. You know. But so okay, today oddball history, we are doing the USS William D. Porter, the Willie D. The Willie D. They called it. It was the unluckiest ship that's ever shipped. That's what they say. That's what they say. It had a short three year career during yep. World War II. I th- yeah, it was a uh, commission in 1943, built in Orange, Texas, Texas product down in the Gulf there outside of Beaumont. That's right. And uh, I thought this was cool. It was named after, uh, it was a Fletcher class destroyer named for William D. Porter, who was a naval captain in the Civil War. He wasn't a captain, I forgot his name. But uh, that guy is William D. Porter. His dad was the leader of Ole Ironside, the USS Constitution. Nice. Famous naval history. And his adopted brother was the guy that said damn the torpedoes full speed ahead damn so really famous family famous family really and good family they built a lot of ships so they were running low on names to pick you know they went william d porter's good enough yeah their family motto ship happens <laughs> that's how into shipping <laughs> yeah. stuff they were if you got a naval family you got to have a crest you know and uh they went jokey with theirs and i respect the I respect hell, the hell out, out of it as a comedian it, you know? i respect it i love it uh yeah so at uh yeah they lay it down in 19 it's in 1943 at uh it, it's first uh heads up to norfolk after a, a shakedown trip i didn't know about uh sh- i think it's called a shakedown where they uh the the ship just goes around uh and kind of uh make see what sure falls there's nothing off. wrong yeah, exactly <laughs> see what yeah. falls off uh, make sure there's nothing too wrong with it uh, before it gets into real service. Uh, so it, uh, you know, skanked around as they, that's a technical term the Navy uses. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ship happens, skank around. All over the place and ends up in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Yep. Where the, it's, uh, it's, uh, tra- it does its like training uh, stuff there. Yeah. With get all other. The guys on. Yeah, with uh, that was other big, members of the Atlantic fleet, like the USS Intrepid and the... Uh, a big part of the story, which comes up later, is that there was a lot of new ships and a lot of new guys on those ships. Like, there wasn't a lot of naval experience, because uh, like, during World War II, when they ramped up production after Pearl Harbor, they made like 1,200 new ships, which uh, they said 
uh, as far as like naval tonnage in the water, the U.S. controlled 70% of it. So we just had, we had more iron in the ocean than all the rest of the world combined. Hell yeah. And uh, it kind of goes to show like you've ever, like you've heard the thing about Sherman tanks. Yeah. Where it was like the, t- the Panzer Tiger, the German tank was better and they had a, uh, German leader go like, oh yeah, a tiger can take down ten Shermans, but the Americans always brought eleven. Yeah, I it's lo- like we needed a few good ships, and America went, how about a few thousand okay ones? And we went, fuck yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. Yeah, we're doing it. Let's get the ships in the water. Uh, let's get this ship on the road. Ship uh, happens. Ship happens. According to the porters. According to the porters, the the William D. Porters. But so yeah, and they uh, they get their first mission. So it's brand new ship, new crew, and their first mission. They don't know what it is. It's top secret, and uh, it turns out they're going to be in the support for FDR going over to Northern Africa. That's right for the uh, Tehran. What was it called? The, the Tehran and the uh, Cairo. Yeah, and the yeah, the Tehran and Cairo conferences. Uh, with Stalin and uh, Churchill. They were all having conferences. They couldn't do it in one place. They had to do it in two places. Yeah. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> they were trying to sell tickets or. <laughs> yeah. You know, we want to hit the Tehran the and the Cairo markets. Kind of thing. But yeah, it's, uh, so our, our guy, the USS Willie D, is uh, working as an escort ship yep. for the president's ship, the USS Iowa, brand new. Uh, ship. If I'm not mistaken, escort uh, that in that in this context, it means that uh, this ship had sex with other <laughs> ships for yeah. money. Yes, but it's legal because you're just escorting your time. It's but not it's prostitution. Okay. Yeah, technically, it's just yeah. a date. It's just They're for just the time. Dating the other. What ship. you choose to do with that time as a ship? Yeah, is that who ship's can bo- say? It's that ship's hole. It's that ship's choice. It's a real uh, legal gray area in terms of <laughs> ship fucking. <laughs> yeah. But everyone I, knows it. everyone knows that and so I mean, i'm uh, not breaking any news here i think it know? was so top secret the guys didn't even know fdr was coming on board that they uh installed a bathtub because he was a famously handicapped man yeah and so it was just all these new sailors being like we get in a fucking jacuzzi like this is yeah. pretty weird okay wow we're getting or treated right is like, it stay too away bad? from the fucking <laughs> jacuzzi <laughs> don't touch the hot tub yeah, I uh, and I appreciated that. I appreciate uh, that FDR was like, I'm not standing in those sh- I'm not even trying to stand up in those fucking ship showers. You know, I uh, I one time uh, toured the USS Lexington. Yeah, and I can tell you, uh, those things are uh, made for physical comedy. They're made for <laughs> mishaps. You know, you're gonna. Uh, as for me, I was a small boy, and we went on this tour. And I uh, uh, fell down a flight of like steps. They're like, it's an aircraft carrier. Yeah. So it's a very high angle. And I uh, misplaced a foot and fell down ass first. My ass hit every step on the way down. That's how uh, <laughs> steep it was. Yeah. And it made like a, um, like a, a sort of <laughs> like a drum roll <laughs> yeah. kind of sound. And then I just landed on my feet at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, and it was, uh, yeah, I was. The Three Stooges music kicks in. Yes, it yeah. was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was some hardcore physical comedy. Hell yeah! In the middle of our tour, my brother was on the USS Nimitz, a uh, aircraft carrier, still around, I imagine. And he always talked about the showers. You had to wear like flip flops in them. He was like, "Because if you went in barefoot, your feet might get pregnant." Uh, and I always thought that was gross. Uh, 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 <laughs> so FDR needs his own bathtub is the moral of that story. Yeah, FDR is we like, I'm have... not walking and cum. <laughs> All right? That's one <laughs> That's... thing everyone should know about me. <laughs> I When I'm not in my wheelchair, I refuse to walk around and cum. The day I was sworn in as president was the day I stopped walking <laughs> around in other men's jizz. All right. I said it in my inauguration speech, and yep. I'll say it again now. <laughs> I've been no very, longer. I've been very clear about this. No longer will FDR sully his toes <laughs> and you people's <laughs> spilled seed. Yeah, I, I don't need to tell you all about yeah. that inaugural address. It's very famous. We've all heard yeah. it in school. The cum address. The cum I think address. it's it's known uh, among Colloquially, historians. It's known. 
but so yeah. the uh, the sh- the USS Willie D starts getting its uh, name as the unluckiest ship because their first day they're meeting with this convoy to take FDR, and as they're pulling out, they uh, their anchor wasn't like secured correctly, and it hit another ship. But they were in a hurry to meet this convoy, so the captain just had to be like, "Sorry, yeah, we can't stick around to exchange information, though. We're just gonna go." Yeah, and this is one of those that there's like not uh, evidence for, but it's like uh, you know, I also would uh, kind of believe that people would not put forth evidence of their own fucking up. So I don't know yeah. where to, you know, I people hit that very hard. They were like, actually, only these things. But I don't know, man. I could see them taking out some rails in both ships being like, you know what? It would be better if we just didn't talk about this they, ever. There's a few items in this story that are like, well, it's not on their official manifest that this event occurred. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, these are all, the military is 19-year-old people with one adult around for every like 100 or 219 year olds, if they have the ability to be like, are we uh, just going to act like this didn't happen and try to fix it ourselves? They're going to do that. Yeah, for so. sure. Yeah, which, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows? But the point is, uh, the fucking Willie D is getting off to a hot, hot start, start in and its service. So this is supposed to be an eight day voyage. The, um, the day after the uh, anchor tearing off the uh, <laughs> the railing and the lifeboat uh, mounts uh, off the sister destroyer, the day after that, it was reported uh, a depth charge fell off the deck of the William D. Porter into rough water and exploded, <laughs> which caused the USS Iowa to take evasive maneuvers. Yes. This is another one that, uh, whether it happened or not, is in dispute, but uh, it's funny as shit and on brand, so I'm going to pretend like it definitely did. Now, there was like multiple reports of that occurring, but one of the big things is, is this is such a top secret mission, all the official information didn't come out until like 10 years after, or 15, 13 years after the war, and because they're traveling across the Atlantic in like a wartime, trying to avoid you know uh, U-boats and German submarines and things, they had to maintain radio silence. And so, like, which is best for Willie D because they accidentally drop a death char- depth charge, everybody freaks out, and they yeah, have to like this light isn't even- signal. Well, this is th- no. This is before that. This no, is no, before they had the to, torpedoing. They had, to, they had to signal the depth charge but thing this too. A, oh, they did. Yeah, and so, but oh my god, they literally had to signal like that was us. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Look, our bad, but nothing like this will ever happen again. <laughs> this will not occur again tomorrow. I swear. We over here at the Willie D learn from our mistakes. And you can expect nothing but a clean track record from here on out. <laughs> and then out of us boys. The next day, uh, <laughs> a, a, a big wave hit the boat. They lost a crew member. He just got swept away to sea and died. Sure. And then it broke something in the engines. Neptune took him. Neptune took him. Old Davy Jones locker. But they had to break radio silence to tell the other ships they had engine problems. So that was the first time they broke radio silence. Day two of the trip. Mm-hmm. On day three. On day three, they're yeah. uh, demonstrating at the president's request mm-hmm. uh, the the defensive capabilities of the USS Iowa, which is uh, mostly involves them letting loose weather balloons and then blasting them with their anti-aircraft guns. Yeah, pretty sweet. And the president being like, this fucking rules. Sweet. This kicks ass. And <laughs> yeah. then, and then uh, they also, though, are interested in showing off how they defend from torpedoes. So what they uh, do is, and uh, they're also, uh, you know, the, the, for the USS uh, William D. Porter, this is like an exercise to simulate a, uh, yeah. a torpedo attack they on an enemy ship. New guys get training rounds in. Yeah, for the USS Iowa, it's defense. In any case, a uh, live torpedo gets loose. They had the, a, they had the USS guy USS William D. Porter. I, I only know his name Dawson because he ends Lawton up like Dawson. Lawton. Oh, Lawton Dawson, the torpedo and son of a bitch. That torpedo and son of a bitch. But he like chief torpedo man's mate. That's his title. 
It's one of the chief, <laughs> chief torpedo, torpedo man. mate, Lawton Dawson. Oh, Lawton. That's a good He's like, really the scapegoat of our story. <laughs> yeah. And I feel bad because I'm sure there were people higher up than him yeah. that were also to blame that successfully like who, who, who got around the blame on yeah. the old, our friend. Lawton but Dawson. Lawton Dawson is the scapegoat of our Where he's supposed to take the primers out. Story here. And they do three torpedo shots. And the first two, he correctly took the primer out. And they just, you know, they're sitting there. They do all the motions. Boom, torpedoes off. And they go, direct hit. You guys did great. The second one, oh, another direct hit. You guys did great. <laughs> and then the third one, they aim it directly at USS Iowa, where the president is seated. And then they launch the third one. And it just, an actual torpedo plops into the water. And everyone just looks at each other and goes, oh, uh, shit. <laughs> Was that supposed to happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. They uh, have launched a torpedo. Uh, At the president, the president of the United States of and America. It's not just the pre- <laughs> By the way, it's not just the president. It's like the secretary of state. It was like yeah. America would have been in really dire straits yeah. if the ship had been successfully torpedoed. So now there's a torpedo on its way. Because of the radio silence, they're again trying to use the, the signal lamp. And I didn't know and this. they're not good at they using have- there, it, nobody knows how to use the signal yeah. lamp, I don't think. Again, it's a 19-year-old on his third day at work. Yeah. Anyone know how to use this? But what this did he, deal? I wrote down what he they fucked up on is the first signal he... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, there's a torpedo moving away. That was the incorrect message. And That's so right. On the Iowa, they're like, so torpedoes going away from They're us like that's good that's the- that's good that's the direction you want the yeah. torpedoes so to they go signal in. back thank you for the good news thanks guys uh keep them coming good work and they go fuck no we got a second message uh, second They're- message is we're backing up really fast he's trying to tell them y'all need to move because there's a torpedo coming at you but he doesn't know the signals, but he goes right? we're backing up we're backing up really fast so again says, the uss iowa has to be like that's Okay, cool. That's cool, we, dude. We don't know why you're telling us, but that's great. That's we're great. We're having a good time with the president and all of uh, and all the leadership of America aboard our ship over here. Uh, thank you for the updates. But so I, uh, I didn't know how far they were and how slow torpedoes moved. They had like three to five yeah. minutes to get this information across. Mm-hmm. And so they burn a couple minutes fucking signaling. around with the signaling. <laughs> and they finally have to break radio silence again. To tell them, they it's like, finally break radio silence, and the eye was like, "We know you're backing up, like we yeah. get it." And they're like, "No, we shot a torpedo at you. Move right now." Yeah, actually, and then, here's the deal: there's a torpedo on its way uh, to kill all of y'all, <laughs> yeah. so you should turn right really Sorry. hard. Sorry, uh, and they did. They yep. turned really hard, and they missed by a thousand feet. Yeah, and it was if, between. I read between a hundred and a thousand yards. Another account that was three hundred yards. In any case, it's very close. Yeah. Uh, the president, when he hears about all this, uh, pretty cool move on his part. Yeah, pretty cool move slash suicidal move on FDR's part. He hears that a torpedo's on its way, and he's like, "Oh shit! Hey, Secret Service guys, could you wheel me over to the starboard side of the ship so I could see?" the torpedo uh do whatever it's gonna do be it explode or kill us all you know yeah. so he uh has a cool seat to watch the thing uh explode and when he does it's reported the president says awesome <laughs> totally awesome <laughs> yeah. you know like spicoli yeah that's what i'm imagining fdr, FDR. doing when the <laughs> when the torpedo explodes it makes world war ii more fun if you think of fdr as spicoli it really really does so you've it got does. to think of just how defeated this leader is where they're yeah. three days in they've had a guy die they've done two desk pops Mm-hmm. They have accidentally discharged two firearms. They're not doing good. They're not doing good. Which how the, the I just wish there was just like I could imagine the defeat of this guy knows everyone's fucking up real hard, and then they do this torpedo thing, and just the torpedo shoots out and hits in the water, and everyone just kind of quietly like just looks at each other. Oh shit! Like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. It's was like that? that. A, did you just shoot a left torpedo? It's like yeah. Did yeah. you ever see that? <laughs> Did you ever see that internet video of the guy cutting down the really long tree and it smashes the house? 
But it's one of those yeah. perfectly cut yell video where you just hear the guy go, "Oh God damn it!" Like right before <laughs> it crashes into the house. I feel like that was the that was what was going on. Oh God damn it! That was what was going on here. But so uh, yeah, they were so uh, naturally some people were upset about the William D. Porter almost torpedoing and killing well, the president. They had to break, and this is the second time they broke, there's like a super secret eight-day voyage of no radios so they can't pick up transmissions and kill the president. And three days in, they've used the radio twice yeah. to signal, sorry, that was us. Our bad, again, <laughs> us again, <laughs> us again, sorry. Hey, hey, it's me again. Yeah, I, uh, I shot another thing, I'm sorry. Also less important, but we're not backing up. <laughs> so two-part message torpedo on the way to kill the president also <laughs> we are not backing up we're actually stationary at the moment but so the, uh, the blasting uh torpedoes of yeah. the president the uss iowa turns all their guns on the william d porter because they have to figure out like hey are y'all trying to assassinate the president it really feels like y'all are trying to kill somebody mm-hmm. and they have to go no and so at this point they actually they have to go geez <laughs> We said we were sorry. <laughs> Fucking chill. But they send them back. They have to go back to Bermuda y'all now. Y'all are intense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, y'all they have are, to go. <laughs> y'all are being real jerks about all this. <laughs> yeah. So they have to go. Yeah, they have to go to Bermuda to get a talking to about the whole nearly <laughs> torpedoing the president. They're thing. like, hey, this is one of the most important missions the Navy's doing, and uh, we need all the manpower we can get. But we all decided y'all should, y'all should go home. <laughs> We yeah. think we're good. Uh, yeah, mostly uh, it's mostly uh, our man uh, Lawton Dawson uh, takes the brunt of it. He was reportedly, and the veracity of this is under question, but he was reportedly sentenced to 14 days of hard labor, but then was pardoned by FDR himself. Yeah, but for sure he was court-martialed and busted down from chief torpedo man's mate to torpedo man first class. Oh, God. Which I got to tell you, if you're a torpedo man, that's a fate worse than death. You that know? hurts. That hurts. To be a, you know, to go from a whatever it was, a, a torpe- chief torpedo man's mate yeah. to a first torpedo man. Fucking kill me with a Years. torpedo. That's what I'd do. <laughs> that's what I'd do. I'm if riding I, the next one out of here. If I suffered that fall, that but, torpedo man's fall. Uh, so yeah, he, uh, but then like the, the main guy on the ship, like he, uh, stayed in charge of the ship until like the next year and retired as like a rear admiral. He did good, you know, yeah, like, he didn't he, really he, get they, touched by it. What do they call it? Failing upwards. Yeah. He was cool. He was fine. You know, he had friends. I don't know. But FDR was actually pretty cool about it. Where he was like, it's a new crew. We're new at this. It's fine guys. Yeah. Wilfred a Walter. Yeah. FDR really cool about Just almost <laughs> getting killed really cool. with a torpedo. Yeah. I gotta say like really thumbs up to him. But for that. so then after that, after this three day mess up of a first mission, they end up going to the Aleutian islands, like uh, by Alaska. That's right. They land in Dutch Harbor from, deadliest catch Ooh! if you've watched wow. deadliest catch you know dutch harbor i've seen some deadliest catch in they my were time. there all about crab fishermen yeah <laughs> i gotta tell you these guys they're obsessed with crabs <laughs> they love crab. they can't get enough <laughs> yeah. they fucking love it uh a very emotional show more emotional than i would have thought these crab fishermen are very emotional men all of them have dead dads because they're like they're, they're all also crab fishermen. crab fishermen and they live horribly unhealthy lives and <laughs> yeah. die young all of them so all their dads are dead and then when they do good crab fishing they're like i know my dad's looking down on me right now help me with the crabs <laughs> good haul son good haul and it's very emotional all the time and i'm like i thought i was like watching like a show about stoic tough crab fishermen yeah it's a lot of feelings talk <laughs> though it's a lot of feelings talk. i need to go as back m- and watch deadliest cat as much feelings talk as any love island i gotta say <laughs> yeah you gotta the dra- so the many drama's <laughs> gotta come from somewhere you know dead relatives and sometimes they can't get enough crab that's usually where the <laughs> drama comes from sometimes there's not enough crab but we then later crab. they do get enough crab <laughs> You got to have an arc, you know? Yeah. But so we have to go on a journey. They're you know? in the Aleutian you can't be Islands. the same as you were at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> they're in the Aleutian Islands and uh, they get their orders 
where there's like training and doing stuff and there is like they don't know yeah. where japan's gonna come from so they're like protecting that side too yeah and here we get in a stretch of the of the willie d doing good like yeah this is a stretch of they were doing good work they were mm -hmm. escorting a lot again having sex with other ships for money <laughs> yeah. under the guise of just dating the ships yep uh, no, I'm kidding, but they were, you know, uh, Doing they weren't escorts. actually having sex. The ship wasn't, act ships don't have sex to the best of my knowledge, but they're doing We'll, uh, we'll have to do some work. research to confirm that yeah, or not. We can, but we can come back to this later uh, once below. we've done the, you know, the research. Uh, yeah, if you are a sexologist and you know if ships do fuck, if they have uh, genitals, uh, please let us know in the comments, yep. uh, any sexologists out feedback. there. Uh, and yeah, but they get their orders to go to the, uh, Western Pacific and actually go to war when we're over there in that theater with Japan and all that. Yeah. Spend and so, a lot of time in the curl islands, but they, I don't think I had ever heard of those before, no. <laughs> but they throw a party, you know, it's all young men. It's the military. They're like, Oh, we're going, we're actually going to war now. Like, so they let them, you know, cut loose and they get drunk. And one of their guys goes, this is a celebration. We need some fireworks. So he loads a shell into one of their guns and discharges it. And it like out of, this is like an animal house level joke yeah. where the shell lands in the yard of the commandant who's throwing a party with all like the officers at that base. And they shoot a shell. That is very animal house. It's just, it's the most animal housey thing that's ever occurred. And then it lands and this guy gets bust down and they're like, all right. But again, in military fashion or just any like job, like I I'm a fireman. So I've seen similar things where it's just like somebody fucks something up. Let's just make this go away. And see if no, <laughs> one, get, no one needs to get in trouble for this. Mm -hmm. Where it's just like, y'all are going to war tomorrow. Uh, just go ahead and go. Don't be yeah. shooting off shells at people's houses anymore. We're already on double secret probation. You know, <laughs> there's nothing you more than that. Triple secret probation. You can't do that. What are they going to do? Kick us out of school? <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. If they do, we'll fucking destroy their downtown Christmas parade <laughs> yeah. with our hijinks. Yes. Marbles on the ground. Everyone's tying a falling. chain to a mailbox and then the other end of the chain to a car to pull the mailbox and then it shoots mail into the air. <laughs> Did that happen or am I making that? <laughs> I don't You're remember the mail I'm just shooting. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just make up? But I'll, I'll allow it. That seems reasonable. Well, you know, if it didn't happen, it should have. But this cracked me up. <laughs> is, as Sorry, they were, Mike Nichols. I tell you, whoever did that movie. I think it was Mike Nichols. This is one of the funnier we things you, of their Nichols. entire story is that now it's known that these guys have been messing up. They've dropped a depth charge in an accident. They shot a torpedo at the president. Yep. And now every time they're like traveling to the Western fleet, whenever a ship gets close enough to communicate with them, they go, don't shoot, we're Republicans. Because <laughs> FDR was FDR a Democrat. Because a Democrat. Yeah. So they were like, you're going to kill them because so, of that. You know, please don't shoot at us, which is hilarious. It's a great bit. Yeah. I got to say, it's a great bit. But I, you know the guys on the Willie D were just like, man, people cannot let this us almost killing the president thing go. Like, you shoot I, one torpedo at a president and everyone doesn't let it go. I like to laugh at myself as much as the next man, but like it's over. Like that was like <laughs> yeah. four days ago that we almost <laughs> torpedoed the president's ship. We've and moved on. Killed him, consigning him to an early watery grave. You know, that was a long time ago and people keep bringing it up. But then sick of it, uh, sick of it all. <laughs> but then they end up in the Western theater and uh, they actually like, yeah, they help with the invasion of Luzon. That's a famous one. I yep. had heard of that from world war two in color. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know, I saw some TV about that. But, they did. They were doing a lot of bombardment work where they're yeah. just, uh, anchored off the coast, just shelling the shit out of, uh, wherever as our guys are invading, uh, providing Need it. support for the land. And then they're also uh, shooting down kamikaze pilots. Yeah, lots of kamikaze pilots around, of course. Uh, and they actually, go, in the Battle of Okinawa, was yeah, their go, final one. Yeah, they go from yeah they go from Luzon they go from Luzon in the Philippines to the Lingayen. I wasn't sure about the pronunciation of this even one time. The Lingayen <laughs> Gulf. 
uh, more shore bombardment, and then it left to escort uh, the USS Lindenwald and the USS Epping Forest to Guam. Our old pals Guam, huh, Guam, yeah. not so peaceful now as it was <laughs> yeah. in the episode yeah. uh, when we last had it. And then on to yeah, the Battle of Okinawa. Okinawa, famously where Mr. Miyagi is from, from the Karate Kid movies. That's like the character or the actor? The character. Hell yeah. Maybe, and the actor too. I <laughs> Who don't know. Who knows? Yeah. No but one's asked. I know the, I know the character. Cause He's gone now, so it's information lost to the sands of time. Because he goes to Okinawa with Daniel-san oh. in one of the movies, and then uh, Daniel-san, like, he gets in a beef with a local kid over a girl, of course. You know, yeah. you know how karate is. <laughs> and then... <laughs> <laughs> you know how karate guys and are, they, man. And they like check out the Elvis other. episode. <laughs> Please, yeah, check out the Elvis episode. Our most controversial <laughs> yeah. episode to date. Just a lot of old ladies yelling at us on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, like, people are fired up about <laughs> Elvis still. Elvis today. has an active community of followers that still are about it. Yeah. But so Daniel son, he's going to, you know, kill this guy or this guy's going to kill him. He's like, look, I don't know how you do things down in fucking California, but here it's battle to the death. Uh, but they're about to fight, I think. And then like a hurricane or a, what is it there? It's a, a, a tsunami or a, or a tidal wave. One a of the tsunami natural, is like a tidal wave situation. I think maybe a tsunami happens. Some natural disaster happens. Yeah. In any case, it brings them together. You know, they Aww. realize there's things bigger than karate. It turns out the important thing was the friends we made along the way. Yeah. The friends and even uh, the friends, including the people you actively hate uh, <laughs> and wish they were dead, uh, you know, but then ultimately Danny doesn't wish he was dead because he saves him. And that's powerful. <laughs> <laughs> A big moment in the movie. We recommend Karate Kid. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the guy goes in on to help him after that, too. It's a very 80s movie thing. That, yeah. That was happening all the time. In I movies like this is 80s. the most They're unsure like, recap of a movie. There was like horrible. I'm yeah. pretty sure they Listen, become friends. If this was the first Karate Kid, I could tell you exactly <laughs> yeah. what happens. When we're getting into the sequels, yeah. I'm, I don't know. There's we're a lot of gray waters. area. We'll it's like it that out. Bojack Horseman where the woman has dementia, so in her memories, the faces are all blurred. Have you ever seen that one? No. It's very sad. It makes you think. Yeah. It makes you think. Just how I like my cartoons about horses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which Horribly we're depressing. In, check this out, everybody. We're in deep water right now. Just like the USS like Willie D the at US, the Battle of Okinawa. At the Battle of Okinawa. That's right. Where they actually they get commended for a lot of good service there. And they're, you know, they're a good yeah. crew. They're running. They're, they're operating. They're blasting planes out of the air. They're doing good work. And then finally, in their one of their last unlucky moments is... Uh, they have a kamikaze plane going straight for them and they shoot it down, but they destroy this plane and it's still coming at like an angle and it hits the water like pretty far away from them. But then it proceeds to float or like, like sink underneath the boat. And yeah. Explode. It slid perfectly under. And they the say USS. the explosion literally lifted the boat out of the water. It must've been crazy as shit to see. It's oh, yeah. crazy just to think about a ship, Watching? a destroyer being lifted out of the water by an explosion some of the uh i don't know my brother was in the navy and like yeah you know you're fine on an aircraft carrier nowadays like the chance you're gonna get hurt in like a workplace accident before any war stuff happens to falling you. down the steps falling down the in stairs a dangerous fashion. but looking at like some of the pictures and stuff back then of all the boats getting after it with the planes and mortar rounds everywhere and you're like god dang that was like being in the navy in world war ii was not like the safe let's go get college paid for move it was you were out there doing it yeah but it was crazy yeah and the crazy thing is it was the unluckiest boat however nobody died in that and uh all the, there's like enough boats around were and it took like three hours to sink and yeah. uh yeah all the crew got off and nobody died or got hurt which is pretty yeah. wild and I definitely think this is for sure the unluckiest ship of the United States. Because I heard of a Japanese ship who they dropped a bomb in it. And the Japanese, like, they weren't allowed to leave their posts at any time. And so this bomb, like, literally fell through, like, the decks of the, all the layers of the ship and exploded in it. And it turned the entire ship into a giant like oven and these uh, men were just baked alive. I would say that's Ugh. a little more unlucky yeah. than almost torpedoing the yeah. president. But you know, this, who am I to judge? We, this is more unlucky implies a little hijinks to it. 
you know? Yeah, that's true. Just gruesome deaths. Yeah, just a little. Uh, are just, also unlucky, but just uh, kind of the Mister Bean of the U.S. <laughs> Navy, if you will. The yeah. USS Willie, the Willie D. Porter. Yeah, but, yeah. it was. Uh, but yeah, and it uh, it sank. Um, the shipwreck is uh, just off the. Co- I don't know where the shipwreck is. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I started somewhere that near sentence. Okinawa. I started that sentence really confidently, like I had read where yeah. the shipwreck lies, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know at all. But, but that's, that is um, the uh, life and times of the USS Willie D. Yep. The, we hardly knew ye. We hardly knew ye. Three years of, of fun and mishaps. <laughs> you know, they're still the everyone's D. still fired up about it, making fun of them. And honestly, you know, that's I think. I think more U.S. Navy warships could stand to be a little funnier. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's not one of their strong suits. No, They're good not. at what they do, yeah. but it's very humorless. We're having if I a hard may time. A we're having a hard time recruiting people. Let's have you a know? little fun out let's there. Let's have a little fun. Let's <laughs> yeah. let's launch a torpedo at the president Every now and, then and then that he can escape from at the last minute. That's fun. We're it's doing funny a, for everybody. We're doing a desk pop. We're t- yeah. I thought That's I thought right. of that scene like nine times reading about this. <laughs> it's just like twice in a row, yeah. and so another ship being like, "You actually so, did the desk pop? Like you shouldn't." What, so what are you funny. Thinking? I love that movie. Uh, it's it's funny. Uh, yeah, it's a gem. You got any stuff going on? Anything you done recently? I am. Uh, I was at the Addison Improv last night for the How Devin that? Clark and Friends show. Super fun. Uh, very funny. good, very good uh, crowd. It looked like it was going to be real light when we fir- when I first got there. I was like, "Whew!" It was kind of rainy outside, and people in Dallas sometimes will just not go out if it's yeah. rainy, which I get because I won't either yeah. unless I have a show. Uh, Devin, but anyway, it ended up filling out. It was good. It was a, nice. yeah, a real fun show. It was Devin me, Clark, uh, he uh, he's got this th- Devin Clark comedy on Instagram. I yeah, believe super funny guy. Give him a follow. He does. I love it. Like movie. He's got a great movie review voice. But he does these reviews of shady motels, and I told oh, him yeah. a couple to go check out because, like, I work around some like rougher areas with like shady <laughs> motels. And he w- did one, and I was like, I have fished a dead body out of one of those rooms before. <laughs> and I was like, Boy, do I have a list of places for you to check out! <laughs> oh shit! So I told him to go to the Dallas Inn, which is on like Keist and Thirty, like the frontage road right there. Which oh, I I've just driven by that one. Yeah, I've it given probably sketchy. thirty people Narcan in that building. <laughs> nice. So it's not nice. A lot of fond memories there. <laughs> yeah, uh, you could make like a whole like Apple slideshow of just like thirty borderline Narcans. dead bodies. That's enough for like a long, like a long emotional slideshow. <laughs> Think about it. Do you snap pictures with them after you're done? Because you, that could be a... <laughs> Typically, no. <All> right, <laughs> Do it before and after. I think they'd be frowned upon to just snap the picture. <laughs> yeah. Me bagging a guy. <laughs> He's fine. He's, this guy's pretty bad. Yeah. It makes it extra funny how on uh, Lone Star 911 they want to go viral. That is... <laughs> that's not... Like, I don't, I don't think... Like, that's how you that get promoted. Is you like, oh, he went viral. It's like, you you're gotta, a driver now. Yeah. Being a firefighter is all about fame. About going viral. I know we've made these jokes before because <laughs> yeah. it's Lone Star 911, but occasionally I'll think about it and uh, and laugh all over again. That's so funny. I was describing to my girlfriend the beginning of the show, the microwaved foil burrito, burrito yep. killing an entire, uh, an fire, entire station fire station. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. It's a good show. It's you fantastic. Know, it's uh, if it's you, a lot uh, of fun. It's a stupid show. It's obnoxious, way too woke for its own good. But if you're a fireman or an EMS person Lowe out there. Rob Lowe blocked me on Twitter for telling him to <laughs> shut the fuck up during the Dallas Cowboys 2013 playoff loss to yeah. the Green Bay Packers. Rob Lowe's not putting up with it. But it's a good sarcastic <laughs> watch. Like I, I've tried to put it on at the station a few times, and everyone it always it's gets a good kick out of everybody. super fun. Yeah. I have to imagine it would be even more fun if you were a firefighter. Uh, uh, and also more aggravating, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like, just uh, like crazy. It's, uh, that's what I appreciate about it though. Is like, they were like, we're not going to ask anybody <laughs> about this stuff. <laughs> we're just, <laughs> we're not going to even yeah. fucking talk to anyone who's yeah. ever known a real firefighter. We're not doing We're it. just taking swings blindly <laughs> yeah. on this show. Microwave foil burrito boom. burning down. A grain silos. Grain gone. silo. <laughs> Bang, done. But yeah, my point is watch Lone Star. Watch nine one one Lone on Star. Fox. Devin Clark is, it is on funny. Fox? Yeah, Devin Clark is a funny dude. Shout out him. 
Uh, Solid time at the improv. See. I got a St. Paddy's just happened. I was working freaking I the Saturday St. Patty's parade in Dallas. I thought about you because I was trying to get to my weed guy's house and I was running into all the blockage with all the fire trucks blocking the the guy who lives kind of near where the uh, parade Parade happens. happens. And I meant I never think about it. So I'm always in the same position of having to try to go around around the general area. Yeah, but it's a blast. I was bummed I was working, but we had a bunch of guys from our station go do the New York City parade. Or like you just oh, wear yeah. your class A's, like your dress uniform, and you march with them, and you go past like St. Path- Patrick's Cathedral. And oh, that's cool. So, I'm, and a few of the guys brought their wives, a couple single guys running around. So, I'm sure everyone got nice and tuned up. You know, nice. Hell yeah. Can but. you carry a boombox when you're doing that kind of thing? Like <laughs> yeah. blasting a song just kind of that speaks to your personal brand as a firefighter? Yes, yes you can. It's or just Fireman gotta... by George Strait. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Fireman by Lil Wayne. <laughs> it's Lil back, Wayne. back and forth. It's back and forth between the two. Fireman. Fire for Fireman. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? That was when that album came out. That was like the Carter II. That's right. Oh, that was. That was like the summer. Dude, yeah, that was great. Just, I loved that. Was, everyone yeah, that just was like listened Lil to that. Wayne at his height. He came out with like eight mixtapes in between that album and the next album he put out. You remember that, Lil Louisiana, that kind of yeah, that kind of stretch. It was a good time. That I, was um, a peak Lil Wayne. Yeah, peak Lil Wayne. You got any shows coming up? Uh, not that I can think of. Uh, and I do, I think I hit a little bit of a lull, uh, book me on your comedy <laughs> shows. Uh, yeah, we're not asking for you up. to come to shows anymore. Please put us on shows. Yeah, I, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but, uh, no, I don't have much on the books yeah. right now. Again, this is me putting my bowl up and saying, <laughs> can I have gods, some more? More, please. Sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, fucking book me. pieces. <laughs> I'm going through like the seven stages. <laughs> <laughs> of not having any shows on the books. Yeah. Hey, there's always backdoor on that the weekends. That one was anger. I wonder what'll be next. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I, I have much. I've been... Um, no. Always backdoor. Yeah, I, I had always a backdoor good comedy stretch club. And then, yeah, I'll be at... Uh, if I'm not anywhere else, you can catch me at Backdoor Comedy Club at, in Richardson I do. I have Fridays that. I'm, I'm headlining Rose City and part. Tyler and April 13th. I'm going out of town oh, for yeah. like so 10 days. So much fun. So, so I was just there. Yeah. Blast. It's bla- the first it's time blast. with the new um, alignment of the okay. club. Like it's turned. Yeah. Have you been there since? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're like facing the green the room. Street. Your back's to it. Yeah, yeah. 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 But good club. Always a good time. It's a blast. I love that they got that going and it's all DIY and it's got a good vibe to it. Yeah. Great vibe. But then I, yeah. I, I, I got some gray area too. But then I'm doing like three feature weekends in like April, May, and June. So oh, yeah. with people that I've worked with before, so that'd be fun. Hell yeah. Good times. But yeah, check out Jimmy Nelson.com or Jimmy Nelson.com, Jimmy Nelson comedy.com show dates and stuff. Check out the podcast. We got plenty of episodes. Yeah. Follow our asses on Instagram. We're on Instagram. Uh, and, uh, make sure to subscribe on YouTube. Oh, we've never really done this before. We've never really done this. We're smash fucking pros that, now. Smash that like button, you pieces of shit. We're fucking... We're, smash it. We're so goddamn pro. <laughs> yeah. I watched this movie last night with a young yeah. Christopher Walken from 1983 called Dead Zone. You ever heard of it? No. It's. I did not realize this going in, but it's clearly the basis for the South Park episode, Cartman's Incredible Gift, I think it's called, <laughs> okay. but the one where he's a psychic. Yeah. But it's... Uh, and also, there's a there's an American Dad parody of it too i've seen several parodies of it without knowing and now you, know, you it see one it of those. Like, oh geez but christopher walken is like in a like a car wreck and but then he comes out of like his coma and he can if he touches people he can see their death uh oh. and uh so then he goes to uh help solve the uh, uh murder for the police you know and then eventually he gets to know this uh this politician who's real evil seeming he's played by martin sheen and uh, he he shakes his hand at one point, and he sees the guy's death as him uh, unleashing the bomb. He's like dropping, doing the the bomb on the world. He's just uh, taking the world with him. <laughs> okay. So naturally, now this we have is to stop this man. Naturally, this is upsetting to old Christopher Walken. Yeah. And so uh, he's like, well, clearly I got to kill this guy. 
And so, uh, meanwhile, he had a girlfriend before he was in the wreck, but she moved on while he was in his coma. So now she has a kid. Guys, with we're a guy doing warning spoiler was, alert for Dead yeah, Zone that came out in 1983. Alert. Dead Zone. If you haven't seen it by now, uh, get fucked. No, <laughs> just uh, fast forward. You know, like uh, like a minute. But so Walken has a kid with this lady, right? But now she's uh, or no, that I don't think it's his kid. She marries this guy while he's in the coma. All right, but this guy works for the politician so in the end when Walken's going with his uh, sniper rifle he's getting ready to kill this guy you know for the good of humanity yep he's setting up but uh he, the uh Martin Sheen sees the lady's kid and she he's like oh this is a great photo op I'll bring the kid on stage with me and so then Walken he's like clutched up he's like all curled up yeah. in his bird's nest you know he's not uh he's not uh seeing that the kid's on stage so he turns around to shoot the guy uh Martin Sheen and takes a shot but, uh, you know, a guy sees him right at the last minute, so he misses. He hits the podium. So Martin Sheen grabs the child and uses it as a human <laughs> shield and just starts going like, like this with the baby as a human <laughs> shield. And so Christopher Walken, at first, he's like, I'm nah, still, I got another shot in me. And then, but he realizes he, the guy's literally using a baby as a human shield. So he's like, that's probably disqualifying enough as a politician and i don't even have to do the other shot yeah uh so then he gets shot by oh. the guy's security guard but it's cool because martin sheen he comes over to him as he's laying dying there on the floor christopher walking and uh he's like what the hell is your problem buddy and he grabs him you know and then the vision of his death is like a, a lonely suicide so not taking anyone with him world saved thank you christopher thank Walken. you wow what a poignant end it was fantastic. Yeah. I got to say 10 of 10. 10 out of there, 10. There's a part when uh, when someone like mentions God to Christopher Walken and Christopher Walken's like, God, he threw an 18 wheeler at me. <laughs> he knocked me out of the world for five years. <laughs> Young I Chris like, Walken. We need to do a, a master cut, a clip show of Scott remembering 80% of movies. That was my favorite <laughs> line. Yeah, I'm sure I'm missing things. I, should, I can't stress that enough. Yeah. You should just watch The Dead Zone <laughs> and then come back to this part in the podcast so you can... Yeah. Uh, you can. Uh, you got homework now, So everybody. you can uh, discuss it with me, you know, over, over this medium. <laughs> but it was uh, real 80s, real good. Martin Sheen, very evil. Uh, uh, Chris Walken, very good. Um, Love to hear it. Great so, times. Smash that like uh, it button. It was a good week. Hit that like button, y'all. Subscribe to stuff. Yeah. Or tell don't. your friends. It's your decision at the end of the day. Tell your adults. friends, you know. Uh, get into it. Uh, don't know, tell Vandalize them. things <laughs> in our name. <laughs> don't uh, tell them what. Just say, get into it. Yeah. And they'll know. They'll know. The universe finds a way. Through Christ, all things are possible. Thank you and good night. Is that true? <laughs> Maybe. All right. All right. <laughs> We're going to check in on that, and uh, <laughs> we'll be back with you next week on yeah. Oddball, Oddball History.